Hello, it's Joe Glines, and uh, this is the sixth video on web scraping. This one we're going to demonstrate. It, it's more about programming than it's web scraping, but I, I thought it'd be nice to have an example of looping through pages and extracting data. Um, I was looking around for an example, and um, what I often do is, is find something of, of interest that you realize you can do some simple URL manipulation, and um, that'll get you to different pages that has data that you want. And so I found this ziphoo.com website, and I had put in a zip code, right? And I, and I noticed what I always do is I go back and I look at the URL, and I search it, and uh, and it comes up with some actually some interesting data uh, about the zip code people, or I should say people living in the zip code and stuff, aggregated data. Um, and let and if you change this to let's say seven nine another search you can see right here the uh, let me get a new window oh, bring it over um, you can see this is what changed um, there are some other parameters in here and so e even though I just did two let's go back one I'm gonna copy this put it back in here um, basically the only so if you can see these, this underline here is the same. I, I have site set up so um, things that are similar will be underlined. So I know those two, these are staying the same. Zip code is really the only thing that's changing here. Um, and what I've done, uh, I'm sorry, I did a little testing here. So we could easily zip, th um, loop through, get, put a, get a bunch of zip codes, loop through these. Um, of course we'd have to add these parameters, oops, after. Um, and, and from my experience, the actual de order doesn't matter. Obviously, your first one is always going to start with a question mark, and zip equals this, and then we have these other things. But I did a little testing, and the first thing I did was I said, hey, you know what happen What happens if I get rid of this? This mode equals zip, I was guessing, was tied to this. So let's. I'm going to show you here, put this back in here, and go, that's a lot shorter and cleaner. Yeah, it still pulled back the data. But how about, because e just because it'd be simpler, right? What happens if I move this guy to the end, right? Let me come in here, paste, yep, still loads, right? So obviously I can I can take this, which is just a little bit simpler to, to program, and then loop through those and pass it a bunch of zip codes, right? Um, so, and you know what, let me, let me start from scratch. I had an example here, but uh, we're no cheating today. So, um, in the script writer, if you look under get from page, oh, or not, <laughs> sorry, I, I put it under page navigation. So navigate over loop. This drops in, um, it's actually a working example for there. Uh, you know what, let me put in my intro stuff. And, um, you know what, I'll use, oops, not that reload. There we go. Those are the hotkeys I usually use for my testing. This, by the way, just has some default values in it. Um, I can get rid of that and that. It'll make it a little prettier. Okay. So what I did was I have in my in the test code I have some example zip codes with with some spaces in here uh, because sometimes you know when you're grabbing stuff it ends up having bad you know quote unquote bad data where there's missing data or something and I didn't want that to break my loop. So in my example down here. Um, this is this is just setting these zip codes. This uh, I should say, not just these zip codes, but it's it's each row, right? This whole text value into var, um, and then I'm going to parse var, right? I'm going to loop over it line by line. Um, and that's what this is looking for—the line breaks. And each time, it, so so everything inside here, yeah, you can see it now here to here is my loop, right? This very first one I wrote, which is convenient, it says basically, hey, because this value right here is missing, if this is missing, if, I'm sorry, if the a loop field value is missing, go ahead and continue, don't keep going, right? Stop, st break the loop, start at the next row. Um, and then here I have a little cheater, so if the, if when we get to the fifth value, it's going to break the loop. Um, this you can comment it out. What I do is I have it in here, um, and this way it's a quick and easy way to um, 
to test, right? So it'll do the first five and then stop, so that way when you're playing with it, it uh, you don't keep having to go through and restart and everything. It, it'll just automatically stop for me. Uh, I have five as the default value. What I always do is come with that out. Um, this this is in here just to help show you uh, what the what index value you're on and the loop field. Um, oh, oh, I am gonna have to say that. Sorry. So here again, we get our pointer and the pointer, the function. I I did leave it in my little thing here, so it uh it it'll populate that for you. Where did it go? Um, and then. This, I, I know I could have defined the URL outside the loop and then just appended it, but you know what, this is, it's not the most efficient thing in the world, but it's fine. So I'm going to concatenate a new URL, which is going to take the base URL, and it's going to append what's the current value. And then, um, after it appends it, the very next thing is it's going to navigate to it, and then wait for it to um, finish loading. And, and this is just a loop here while it's not um, finished loading. It keeps waiting, waiting, waiting. Oh, it's done. And I set this up. I used the the IE tool and said, okay, um, let's look at this. And here, TD2. Let me see my example here. I think I actually, what I did was, let's go back and show the parent structure. So this details table, I, I keyed it off of that first and then went down to the TD. Um, but we don't need to get into that for this video. Um, and then, let's see, where are we? So that's going to store that value and whatever TD1 is off of the table into v as a variable value. And then because we keep iterating over it, right, it, it of course would get overwritten every time it goes through the loop. So then what I do is I say, okay, here, you know what, let me go ahead and save the zip code as the first column, and I'm going to put in a tab, and then I'm going to put in the value, right, here, and then I'm going to put in a line break, um, and store all that in the aggregated values variable, and, and this just simply means keep appending to it, right? That's why it's also, make sure you do have this, otherwise it'll end up in the same row and it's a mess of data. Um, and then we're going to display it. You know, I didn't actually test this, and it looks like I, I dropped out a, I think this is supposed to say, I'll have to fix that values. I think that's how that works. So we'll find out. Um, loop page example one. Okay. And let's see what happens. Launch it. Oh, looks like I have... Well, that's okay. So it's going to go. It navigated to it. And, uh, and now it's showing it is navigating to it. See how the first one I did? Let me restart it and start again. So it's on value one, right? 89147. Let's come back into here, 89147, and then notice this next one's blank, and it jumps to 3. Right, so when I come back here and hit OK, it, it right now it's navigating the page, and now it, it's on 3, right? So this is a good test, but I, I forgot I had, I'm going to uncomment that, and now let's, let's even go here, I'm going to launch it, and you can watch the page navigation. So it iterates through each page, it's going to grab that value. I, th I think I still had it stop it. So I did something wrong with that. Let me uh, see what I did wrong. I know in this one, oh, darn, web scraping menu five. That's well. Let's see. Oh, you know what I can do? Let me just come back over here because I copied this little bit from a hot string I have. So wrap. Oh, it's supposed to be after it. Okay. So I'll update the code uh, to reflect that. I should have tested this out. Sorry about that. All right, and that's there. You know what? I want to, I'm just, well, there's not that many. Let's uh, comment this out, too, so it's going to iterate through all of these pages. Yeah, come back here. In the page, and they're loading pretty fast. So it's grabbing, I think, the median income on all of these. Darn. Mm -hmm. It's still trying to iterate through it for some reason. I, 
I didn't notice it, it um it actually opened up in the other window and here are the um, the zip codes I should have put in a header and the median incomes um, I'm not sure why these last three it it um, it had a problem on on the page zip code nine six six nine Oh, interesting. I think it uh it didn't I find it hard to believe there are that many in a row. Let me try this out real quick. Oh. This is the, the joys of uh web scraping, you find all these fun little things. Yeah, it uh it looks like that's not a valid zip code. I put in zip codes on places I had lived before. Um so I need to build in um some error checking in this as well. Uh Let's see real quickly if there is even anything here. Uh, body is zero. So what we would do is basically s um, we need to build some logic in here to say if the inner text of this body zero is a question mark, you know, continue on. Anyway, hope that helps. Um, thank you.